Let me introduce you to the most useful VS Code extension I've added in a while. It's Console Ninja for my friends over at Wallaby. On the right-hand side over here, we've got VS Code. And on the left-hand side, we've got a Vite application with the stock React template, which of course has this little counter in it. We can click on it a few times and see the count go up. But why? What is the magic that's going on here? Well, let's go and add in a console log to find out. And we'll just add a console log for count. Hit save, and now we can see that the current value is three, right in place, right there, right in my VS code. And that's the magic of Console Ninja, this free new extension from the Wallaby folks. And we can just keep on clicking, and we can see that counter go up and up and up, and we can see it dynamically right in place. And we can get a log of all of that action that we've just seen. So why are we getting multiple eights and multiple sevens? We'll figure that out. And I will give you my most favorite feature about Console Ninja, and it's not the console logging. And also, we'll figure out if this is good on the back end right after the spiffy graphic intro. Let's get right into it. So let's find out why we're getting multiple console logs. Let's make this big. And why we're getting multiple console logs that we're in React 18. And React 18, when you're in development mode and when you're in strict mode, in that combination, every component is mounted, which renders it, unmounted, and then remounted, which renders it again. And so that's why you get two of everything. And so Console Ninja is showing you the truth. We're actually getting this function run multiple times every time we click that button. How do we get rid of that? Well, let's go over into our main.jsx. And we can just remove strict mode. So now the app is being rerun, and we start at zero again. So let's put this side by side and see how it goes. And we can click on that counter, and now we get just the one. So that's really cool. Console Ninja is showing us the truth, which is exactly what we want from our debugging tools. So before we get deeper into it, I got to say that the Wallaby folks have not paid me for this. This is not an ad. I do use Wallaby personally in my development. It is a unit test helper. I have also shown it on this channel. I have also shown their other product, Quaka, which is a free product that does TypeScript and JavaScript workbooks. And this new one, Console Ninja, I just kind of reached out, asked them, I said, hey, it looks really cool. Can I give it a go? And they said, yeah. And so I've been looking at it for the past about two weeks or so, and it just seamlessly integrated itself into my environment, and it's been phenomenal. But I got to say, my favorite thing about it isn't the console logging. It's when it helps me debug through errors. So let's create an error and see how that works. So I'm going to go and just create a new piece of state here called name. And instead of reasonably giving it a string, I'm just going to give it undefined. So this is undefined. And I'm going to give myself a lowercase name. And now, right now, this null coalescing operator or question mark is actually saving us from getting an error because it's saying, well, name is undefined, so I'm not going to call it to lowercase on it. But if I hit backspace and hit save, then because of hot module reloading, the page refreshes. That again makes the request, and we get the error the error that you can't do to lowercase on undefined. And there you go. You have it right in place. In fact, actually, over here, we even get the full call stack, which is awesome for debugging. Very cool. So will this work for backend folks? Well, let's go take a look at that by using Next.js. So I just happen to have a Next.js app running right here. And we can take a look over it in the browser. This is just a stock Next.js app. Now I could go and add in a counter in home and go see that it works on the client side. It totally does that. But honestly, what's more interesting, I think, is if it works on the API side. So let's go over here to this hello.js. And we just put in a console. Hey, I'm getting called. Okay, cool. And now let's actually run it. So we go and on localhost 3000, we go to API hello. Now we get the name, Jane Doe. And we see that we get the API requested in the console. So this works both on the node server side and also on the client, which is amazing. Now let's go we'll do one more thing. Let's go use get server side props and see if we can get it on the page rendering side of Next.js. Okay, now we started off with name Jane Doe in there, but what we really want to do is go get that from the server, right? So 
Let's go and make the request to the server and then get the JSON back. And that's going to have our name in it, right? Name Jane Doe. So let's go and do data.name. But let's go and make sure that we have that. So let's do the console log data in here. Hit save. Now we haven't done a refresh on the server and we are actually running on the client side, but we need to actually do a page refresh to get the server side props to run. So let's hit and run. And now you can see, ah, we've got our name and we can pass it through into our component and then welcome to that person. Welcome to Jane Doe. Awesome. And we have a pretty good idea that it was going to work because we added these console logs in. We've seen the data and we've seen it right here in our VS code. Now I've also tried this out on view three in solid JS to make sure it works, not just for react folks. And it does. I'm pretty confident in console ninja. Of course, as I said, it's free. So I definitely think it's worth a download and install and a try. Of course, if you have any questions or comments about this, be sure to put that in the comment section down below. And if you like the video, hit that like button. And if you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.